In this video, I'm going to go over the mappings and key bindings, which I've included for writing LaTeX documents in NeoVim. So there's only one plugin, which is worth mentioning here, and that's WitchKey. Um, and this brings up this little nice menu at the bottom when you hit spacebar and provides a whole bunch of other functionality um, running commands, which are cumbersome to type in manually um, and hard to remember. And so this is an easy way to sort of be able to remember what commands you have uh, queued up and to be able to easily trigger them. So let's go into init.vim and let's open this, gf. Okay, so this is the configuration file for WitchKey. And the first thing you see is that WitchKey is triggered by the leader key. That's what is going on here. And leader, if we go back into init.vim, um, is defined in the general settings right here. So it says map leader to spacebar. Okay, so let's go back here. So when you hit spacebar, then what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up which key. Um, that's what this these two commands does. And it does this both in normal mode and visual mode. So what these commands do, if you hit return, you can look them up. Um, but I'll just say quickly that this is normal mode and then no recursive map, which basically means that it defines a new mapping and that mapping does not include in its um, further mappings inside of it. Um, it just includes a single command. Um, and then this one is visual, no recursive map. So it defines a visual mode. So even if I'm in visual mode, I can still hit spacebar and it will bring up the same which key menu. Okay, so that's the trigger. Um, then this uses little arrows, so if I hit spacebar, you can see a little arrow. Um, so just some appearance stuff, which you can change if you really want to. Um, zero, basically pushing the window all the way down to the bottom. I like it down to the bottom, looks really good. Um, and then color stuff. So this is all configuration I've scraped from someone else, and I think it looks great. So, so that is all I have to say about that. Um, here's the actual mappings themselves. Um, so comma, run startify, and so on. So if you open this up, you see comma, you see that little arrow, and then you see the label. So here's comma, here's the label, and then here's the actual command that it's running, startify. Similarly so for delete buffer, you got D, and then it all it does is colon buffer delete force. So, and then the label, delete buffer, and so on for the rest of them. Um, so these are pretty easy to modify for yourself. Um, you create new ones. Um, you can always test out by just doing command mode manually and running a command you want to have a shortcut for, making sure it works in the way you want, and then go ahead and um, create a new which key entry for it. Um, it is worth mentioning that I have some extras here, um, which are a little bit different. So if I open up which key, then I see it under here, I for index, um, and it, uh, it just says here's I, here's the label, but notice there's no command included. So that just adds a sort of an empty entry, as it were. It's not telling which key sort of what command to run, it's just saying, oh yeah, include in your menu this little label. Okay, and the reason for that is that I was having trouble getting which key to run some of these Vimtech commands. Um, and so instead, let's go back to init.vim. Um, and let's go down to mappings, go to file. Okay, and let's search for raw tech. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so here are these um, LaTeX mappings and look, we have space I. And what that is set to do is to run this command, vimtech table of contents toggle. So let's test this out in a, um, so here's a LaTeX file. If I do space and then I, then it's running, it's toggling the table of contents, so basically a little index. And I find this really nice, uh, I use it all the time, um, but I was having trouble getting which key to run it for me. So this is kind of a workaround, um, but one worth explaining. So yeah, these are all sort of defined manually, uh, B, I, P, and C. And if we go back over here, here they are in a different order, but I, B, C, and P. Um, so those are some 
others. Um, the next thing I'll, is worth mentioning is these um, uh, further menus. So if I open up which key, this is kind of the master menu, and then you have these like sub menus. So one for actions, one for Git, and so on, all in blue. Um, and yeah, let's look at templates. So that's defined here. So you have T, and so we have this little T here. And then here is the label, plus templates, plus templates in blue over here. Um, and then here's what is inside that templates folder. So let's hit T. Okay, so now we're inside the templates folder. And th that is all defined here. So let's go to um, P, fill paper. Okay, so that's defined right here. So let's look at that. Um, so it's basically, it's just giving us the, the label P and then it's telling us what it's gonna do. And it's gonna read, which basically just dumps the contents of the following file, this one right here, .tech, fill paper .tech, into whatever the open buffer is. And then it includes a label, um, fill paper .tech is the label. So if you wanted to change some of these things, um, you could create a new one, just in, in say change this to J, and then you would change this to whatever you want, say new, and then you would update the label to uh, new, and you're ready. Um, you'd reload your configuration, and you'd be ready to hit J, and it would just dump in the contents of new.tech uh, into your empty buffer. Okay, um, but let's say actually you like this fill paper template or you just want to sort of customize it to, to your needs itself. So you can do that by going to E and go down to templates and go to fill paper. Okay. And then, yeah, let's go down. Um, all right, let's go up. Say, so say, you know, you, you see my name here, you want to change that to your name, you could do that, save this document, and the next time you um, run the, the template command space T and then hit P, it will dump, you know, this, you know, wh whatever version it is you save of this file into the empty buffer you're working in. So that is one thing you could do there. Um, let's say, so right now we're in the configuration uh, project, and so it's pretty easy to find you know, where, where all these templates are. I just gotta scroll down and open the appropriate one. But let's say you're in some other project and you want to edit um, a template. Um, how would you do that? Well, probably the easiest thing is to switch back to your configuration and to edit it that way. Um, but alternatively, you could do space and then you would do home files. So shift F and then you would search for whatever that is. So fill paper. Yeah, and there it is, inside templates. So that's another way to get in there. Um, yeah, so perhaps worth mentioning. And yeah, that that is about it. These are all similar. So these are the different um, other menus. So you can go through these for yourself, figure out what they do, um, and, and change them or delete them. Um, a lot of times I won't completely delete lines. I will just comment them out and then I will drag them down like that. Just in case I might want to put them back later, I at least have them all written out. Um, let's undo that. So that that is the long and short of what I wanted to say about mappings. Um, yeah, very important to keep your um, mappings relatively orderly. Um, I could probably improve this, but I, I at least have little labels um, and yeah, it's, it's in reasonable shape. Um, one other place though, that you want to stay up to date is so if you pull down my configuration included in that is this cheat sheet. So this is one of the files. And if you go into mappings, um, I've tried to stay, keep this all up to date. So these are all the different mappings that I've added to vanilla Vim. So they don't just come standard with Vim. Um, and so, yeah, if you make further changes, you, uh, I would recommend keeping this document up to date, or at least uh, trying to do so, so that you have just sort of a simple place to find all the different explanations for the different mappings that you're using. Um, and
And that is all that I want to say about mappings. Hopefully that helps. Um, it is a little tedious to go through all of this and change them all for yourself, um, but I think doing so uh, vastly improves the Vim experience and um, yeah, streamline your, your workflow.